Today we're going from old office PC to modern gaming PC. And for only $215, this thing can play pretty much any game you throw at it. And we're gonna show you step-by-step -step how to put it together. But before we do that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Upgrade your small form factor PC or handheld PC to the next level with the cutting edge Team Group MP44S SSD. You can say goodbye to slow load times and hello to lightning fast performance because this SSD is your ticket to seamless speed and reliability. The Team Group MP44S adopts the 22 millimeter by 30 millimeter size specification, and it is 100% compatible with the Steam Deck and ROGFLOW Z13, making it the top choice for upgrades on lightweight devices. If you're interested in picking up the Team Group MP44S or in learning more about it, check out the link in the description down below. Big thanks to Team Group for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to it. All right, so the basis of this computer, well, this whole build, is a Dell Precision Tower that is covered in packing peanuts. Oh, oh wow, Goodness. they're edible. And as you can tell, we have a trash problem. We should have taken the trash out. <laughs> um, so where are these gonna go? I don't know. Do you have another box? box? I'm gonna grab a box. Grab another Jonah's box. Jonah's mouth, we're gonna feed them to him. Oh yeah, Jonah, eat them. Take, take a little this bite. Box for? And we're gonna get all these packing peanuts. Guys, don't use packing peanuts, please. I know it seems easy in practical sense, but in terms of like the end user experience, it's not fun. We just throw peanuts at each other. Oh, there's foam on the side too though. So we pay $93 for this computer, which I think is a really good deal for this Xeon, um, especially with 60 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte hard drive. We're gonna do some upgrades here in a minute. We're gonna open it up and see what we have inside and determine if we need to add anything else because I'm kind of wondering how the power supply is gonna work and I don't remember how I planned this. I'm trying to do this like carefully without, because the case looks like it might actually be in kind of good shape for once. Yeah, normally, it, especially at this price point, I expect it to be a real beater, but so Which, far, looking okay. This is, an, this, is a, um, this is really an office PC. Yes. These are almost more of like workstations. And if you're wondering what the difference is, well, an office PC, it's like internet browsing, really basic tasks typically. Workstations with the Xeon were more so for doing really high-end work. This this wouldn't be your everyday Joe's PC. And the best part about these for gaming systems is normally they come with higher-end power supplies because they had higher-end hardware to begin with. That's a limitation with these Optiplexes is they're meant for browsing. You didn't need to add a high-power graphics card to them. So hopefully this thing has a decent enough power supply in it. I believe from my research it does, and we'll easily be able to get some good performance with this thing. The real question is what actually, yeah, watch out. Will it be better than one of those Lenovo's? Because those true. things are pretty good. Those C520s are hard to beat. But this one I am liking so far, it seems like it's a little smaller and maybe a little lighter. So basically, it's like a nice indented front. It's extendo front. We got some USB 2s, two, some USB 3s. Uh, we have different um, jacks, which is nice. One for microphone, one for headphones. It actually has a DVD drive. And then, you know, in the back, it's, it's a workstation. So of course we get a lot more ports, a lot more USB 2s, a lot more 3s. And then we even actually already have a graphics card installed in here. Yeah, I think it's like a Fire Pro graphics card. So a graphics oh. card that would make sense in the system workstation wise. Might've came with it. Yes. You know, it's pretty cool. But on the inside of here, we have honestly what really looks like a somewhat standard motherboard, except it's not fully standard. We don't have a standard 24 pin. It looks like uh, fan headers normal. So in theory, you could swap out the cooler if you wanted to. Yeah, fans are all pretty normal in this. This we makes me excited. Oh yeah, it actually- PCI power. With, yeah, just one though, one six pin. Will that use a six pin or is that an eight? We'll have to see. We might have to do some adapting here might if that do doesn't some adapting. work. But it is cool that it came with something. I mean, a lot of systems, especially those office PCs, you're not gonna get that. We do have a hard drive. So we're gonna be showing you how to upgrade to a solid state drive, which is absolutely essential. Do not save that money, guys. It ain't worth it. So the graphics card that we have right now is a Fire Pro V4800 one gig. So probably pretty old. Yeah, pretty old. Probably just a more display adapter anything. than anything. Yeah, yeah, so it definitely will be great for gaming. So that's why we have our upgrade options. What I do like is two, two eight gig sticks of RAM, 16 gigs total, and it's DDR4, so it's a little bit modern. Looking good now with this power supply. Remember we said we researched it. What, what did we get? We got, looks like 365 watts. That's not a lot. A little low for a workstation, but it's definitely more than enough for this graphics card, SSD, and the Z1. So speaking of the upgrades, what we have right here is a 1660 Super we bought off of eBay for $99. It's a Ooh. single fan card, but that's a great deal for a six gig graphics card that has the NVIDIA encoder. You can get an intro level live streaming. And I just want to see what kind of condition this thing is in. I do believe, comes with an eight pin, so this is gonna be mm. interesting. We might have to do some adapting here. But this is a single fan card, so it'll fit nicely in the case. But again, the power draw thing is the only thing we're gonna have to worry about. We might have to do a, what are we looking at SATA-wise in there? We have two extra SATA ports, but they're kind of separate, so we're probably just gonna have to use like a single, which might be a little risky, a single SATA Ooh. to eight pin, or 
I wish there was a way we could, because this pro this is probably plenty of power. It is. There's really not much we can do. I don't really, think we, can, I don't really yeah. think we can just do like six only and just not count the other two. So yeah, these are important. Obviously, if you go with a graphics card that requires only a six pin, you won't even have to worry about this. It'll work just fine. But in our situation, we have a slightly higher in graphics card. So we're going to try to find a SATA to Towards six pin adapter. Bottom. So for experimental purposes, we have a SATA to six pin. Now, again, if you want to avoid all this risk that does come with this, you definitely should just get a graphics card that can use a six pin. Why did I get a six pin yeah, and eight? I, I, I was, I was just... All right, guys, we found a magical device here. This is a SATA to a six plus two pin, which is what we need for our graphics card. We need an eight pin. We do not recommend these, okay? Before you go in the comment section <laughs> and start crying, no, we don't recommend these. These are dangerous. It, the problem is the PCIe link can supply about 75 watts max. This card, in theory, max 100% load could pull up to 125 watts. I don't think it will, but let's say it did. That means we're gonna be pushing around 60-ish watts through the SATA connector and through this kind of janky adapter. So, no, we don't recommend doing this, but we're basically going to take this connector and run it off of here because it is close to the graphics card. We're not gonna be able to reach the one from the DVD drive, sadly. So graphics card's gonna be really easy, guys. It's actually toolless. So you're gonna go ahead and come down here. You're gonna push down on this. Sometimes they will be broken. Keep in mind, it is plastic. Now we have a single lane card that we're gonna get out. So you get a tutorial on how to remove a graphics card. Look how easy that was. You basically just push this right here. Don't just pull because you'll end up just ripping it out. And uh, yeah, here's our new graphics card. A lovely single which fan. Which actually came really clean. Normally these are a lot dustier. First, we're gonna take out this because this is a two lane card. And right now we only had one lane open. So now from the back, it looks like that. So hopefully we can get a good little camera angle here. A little, a little finesse and then boop, boop, just like that. And now just make sure that these are lined up so that when you close this, it closes and it's clamped down pretty well. And, you know, got a little bit of wiggle, <laughs> but that's okay. And so now we're gonna use this. Once again, our SATA to eight pin adapter. No, we don't recommend this. Quit commenting. I already know you're literally <laughs> typing right now. We're the experimental bros. Put on our lab coats today. We're seeing what exactly. happens here and uh, seeing the limits of this platform. Exactly. You know, we, we've done these connectors many times and had very good success. We've only had one time where I think the power supply went bad. We don't know if it was because of that or not. So we're gonna go install the SSD. We just went with the Silicon Power 512 gig SSD, which we will be adding right below the hard drive or around the hard drive area, which, oh, well, we're packing you know, they just keep popping up everywhere, guys. And it looks like we don't have a SATA cable spare right now, so we'll need another SATA cable. I'm on it. So the real question is, I don't see any specific this SSD one, mounts or do that. Yeah, you can do this. I like doing the single screw. We can use our short and nubby. Short and nubby. And then you can just kind of screw it through one of those little square holes. Ah, right yes. The top. So I'll show you guys. There's a bunch of these little square holes right here. This isn't like made mounting, like made for this mounting, but it's better than using adhesive because you have metal on metal. Metal. Metal, as one would say. So we got the uh, SSD power plugged in. We got the SATA right here, which should run off nice and easy like that. What we're gonna go ahead and do to make our lives a little easier because we are gonna reinstall Windows and Windows is probably on the hard drive. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go ahead and swap from SATA zero, which is this blue one that's right down here with the blue cable. It's hard to miss. And we're gonna make sure that our SSD, which is gonna be our main drive, is gonna be plugged into SATA zero. So it's the first drive on the list. So we'll run that right there and plug this one into SATA. I guess we'll just plug it into SATA two. Doesn't really matter at that point. It's still our secondary drive. We're gonna plug it into SATA two and we don't even have our um, DVD drive hooked up at the moment, but that may change. And then we're gonna take the SSD and plug it right into the same spot. And just like that, it's plugged in. So as you can see right now, SATA zero is where our SSD is plugged in. Here's the uh, SATA cable for the SSD. SATA two is now the hard drive, which is this blue one, which is plugged in right here. And this right here is for our DVD drive, which is not currently plugged in, but it's still plugged in with the orange cable. So everything is working right. Now we need to screw in our SSD and we're gonna just use some of these little grates that are right here. I see one that's right there. It's, it's shiny. You got one? I think that'll work. Pretty towards the bottom. So this is where you're gonna need it, like a short and nubby screwdriver or even a, uh, they sell like angled um, ratchets essentially that work pretty well. And we are screwed in with one screw, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Nice and secure. Um, but yeah, if you want to go adhesive, you could go the adhesive route as well. But this is much more secure in our opinion and adhesive, you know, sometimes won't hold very well. But we got that installed. We got the graphics card installed. Now again, we're doing a science experiment. This is very similar to when we did that 4060 video and we had to adapt for the 4060. But this is a little bit more of a stretch because we are using the single SATA to 8-pin adapter. Let's see if this thing uh, will actually work properly and play some games. Do it. All right, guys, we're playing Apex Legends and we are currently on a kind of medium preset 1080p, you know, upscaling or anything like that. And we are running good. We're getting some 
This is impressive. Nice. Yeah, yeah, this, this is better than I thought it'd be. Yeah, 180, 190 FPS, 200 at times. This is, E5 is a high frequency, too. That's really what's saving it, I think. Yeah, the, I believe this uh, Xeon compares to the 6th Gen i7, so four core eight thread. Um, so, and it seems to be going really good. I know its max boost is supposed to be 4 gigahertz, which is very high for a Xeon. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so let's go. But yeah, we're, we're still a little concerned long term about using this adapter, but the performance, it's looking really good. Yeah, this is, this is great. So far, we haven't seen over like 125, 126 watts. I did do some research, and um, I know I've looked this up before and I've forgotten like every time, but it looks like the SATA connectors um, can do around like 54, 55 watts. So like we're getting pretty close with it, but I, I think it's, I think it's going to be just enough because that's what it said it could do safely. But yeah, anything more than this kind of graphics card, I wouldn't even bother. Yeah. Like, it's not a good idea. So definitely look in the uh, no external power requirement or something that only requires a six pin territory and you'll be pretty happy with the performance. Because a six pin could probably supply plenty of watts, yes. honestly. <laughs> Are they really gonna get away from that? <laughs> they really got away from that. I felt like cheating. <laughs> Ow. Oh, oh, doors. You know, when I think of Apex Legends, I think of hiding behind doors. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 teammate, help me, please. Yeah, yeah. your team pulled up. I am very good. <laughs> Moving so fast. Please die. Oh. Right. Oh, run away. Why did this my not go off? No, you're still going. Ugh. We're running them. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. No, this can't be it. This can't be the death. Oh, oh no, it's the death. I thought I could outrun him. I'm just dropping on people's heads. We have no remorse today. Ooh. <laughs> Yoink. I'm sure there's people down here. I hear a lot of people. Oh. These yeah. jukes didn't work very well on me. Uh oh. Yay! Yeah. Hey. Oh, this is this money. Just need one shell. Ah, oh, someone else got him. <laughs> that was a good run, and dang, so far, this PC's off to a great start. Really good so far. Next, the next game. One. All right, guys, the next game we're going to be testing is good old Fortnite. We are currently on 1080p DX11 with medium TSR, quality TSR settings, and medium across the board, and we're getting okay results right now. A bit of a stuttery experience, I do say so myself. This is a game that does use the CPU much more than the GPU, especially on these settings, and as you can tell, that Xeon is definitely getting pushed. So we'll see how well it holds up once we land, but this looks like a new update in Fortnite as well, because... Every single time we get an update in Fortnite, something else goes wrong, if we're being honest here. Performance always seems to tank, but we'll go ahead and land and see if the FPS settles down. We might even experiment with performance mode as well with this system, but I don't think we have to worry about that PCI adapter in this system because our GPU is pulling much less wattage because it's not being fully maxed out. So um, I'm glad Apex worked, uh, but still we wouldn't really recommend it. And when the system ends up at PC Bros, more likely than not, it is not gonna have that GPU. It's gonna have something else in it because we just don't wanna risk it. You know, bit of a stuttery experience, I will say. I'm thinking I'm gonna turn off, if I can do that without getting, oops, actually I see someone across the map. Let's see if I can get them first. Oops, someone's pushing me. Yeah, come here. I'm lagging, but I'm gonna get you. They're, they're, they're running away from me, and I don't like this. I'm gonna run away from them. Ah, uh, AI, no, no. Okay, it's, it's kind of smoothed out, but it's still not great. I'll still mess with the settings here in a second and try to lower um, the upscaling. Because I think we're kind of CPU bound at 1080p here. And when you're using upscaling, sometimes it just makes things worse. So let's go ahead and turn off any sort of upscaling anti-aliasing. And let's see if that makes things better or worse. It's about the same. I'll be honest, it's about the same. Not a, not a major difference. Okay, that guy's gone. Hey, what's up? Okay, well, thanks thanks for coming to visit, buddy. I don't I don't really know what your goal was there, but... Settings, let's see, what could we turn off? Let's turn off these settings. These settings normally cause some problems. 
Yep, that, that was uh, that was a fight if I ever seen one. Oh, getting shot at from behind. Love to see it. Oh, laser. Oh, okay. Well, that was a bad. <laughs> that was a horrible place to start healing, but. Hey, the performance is fine. Not an amazing Fortnite experience, but I would say more than adequate for someone trying to get into esports titles and have a, well, decent experience overall. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is run some built-in benchmarks and kind of monitor that GPU situation again and just see what worst case scenario is for this PC. But if you find one of these systems with an E3 1270 V5 and pair with a GPU that makes sense for the power supply, I think you have yourself a very capable system. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay guys, we just got done testing our office slash workstation PC that is now a gaming PC. And it actually performed really well. And honestly, this adapter, the more we used it, the more we were pretty confident that it's not gonna catch fire and blow up. But once again, viewer discretion is advised. Yeah, using these adapters, you gotta be very careful, especially with how much power you're pulling. And for our experimental purposes, it worked out fine, but you at home should probably be a little bit careful and maybe buy a graphics card that uses just a six pin power. So you just don't have to worry about this whole adapter thing. Uh, but these are really good good computers for a GPU upgrade if you can find a graphics card that makes sense for it and has that Xeon in there, which in Apex Legends, we were incredibly impressed with the FPS numbers we got and the other games we tested as well. So if you want to build a PC like this, check the links in the description down below. They will be affiliate links and they will help us out. Let us know what you think of this, well, Dell Tower and if it's something you would consider for your next budget gaming PC build. And as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace Goodbye. Out. So this gaming PC right here now has been tested by the Toaster Bros. will likely maybe be downgraded on the GPU side, but it will be for sale at a great price. PC Bros. on tag. We sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, and so much more. Use code Toasty Bros. to one check out. You'll save 2% of your purchase on your next PC. And stay tuned, guys. We're going to have some awesome Black Friday sales coming up very soon. See you guys mm -hmm. later. Goodbye.